Hello you guys, it is Crystal Lopez here from crystalincomp.com. Jack says hello, how are you? All right, how are you doing today? I would love to know. All right, I am making one of my favorite, simple, easy, go-to dinner ideas that's perfect for a busy night when you have some cooked chicken on hand. This is so easy. And you've probably heard of this before, especially if you were alive in the 90s and old enough to cook in the 90s when Pampered Chef was huge and people would do Pampered Chef parties and all of that. It is the chicken broccoli ring or chicken broccoli braid. And I have the recipe in a printable version over on my site, crystalandcomp.com. So hop over and print that out. I'll leave a link below so that you can print it, put it in your recipe binder, put it in your recipe box, however you wanna do it. But I give you the step-by-step -step directions here on exactly how to make it. Look at my kitchen, it is a mess. I'm gonna get that taken care of. All right, so let me show you how easy this is to make, okay? Ready, set, go. All right, here are the things that we'll need. You need some shredded cheese, whatever kind you have is fine. Crescent rolls, two packages, some sea salt, some dill. You don't have to have fresh. Bell pepper, but I just used the little mini peppers. Mayonnaise, broccoli, garlic, and some, what was that? Ah, chicken, cooked chicken, that's what that was. Um, and then an egg. So we're gonna use the egg to brush the top. We're actually just gonna use the egg white. Okay, so I, I suppose you could use frozen broccoli. I've never done that in this that I can recall. I like to just use the fresh stuff. I had some that I hadn't used on any sheet pans yet that I bought at Costco, so that's what we have here, and I just chopped it up. Now, I am doubling this recipe because I got a big family, so I need to make a lot. You can use regular bell peppers or those little mini bell peppers. I love these, they're that versatile. I could use them in a recipe like this, or we could use them on a sheet pan dinner, or use them to dip in a charcuterie board, what have you. So I just did a variety of some of the orange and some of the red and chopped them up and we're just tossing them right in. Do as many as you want or as few as you want. It really doesn't matter. So that chicken that's over there, I cooked that in the Instant Pot because it cooks so fast in the Instant Pot and then just shredded it up. But you could use a rotisserie chicken. You could use canned chicken. You do you, okay? We're gonna add in a little bit of salt, just a pinch, not too much. And then we're gonna add in some garlic. Now, I will confess, I added way too much garlic. We love garlic. Um, honestly, it's my husband's fault. Like he started it all. He is a garlic fanatic. And so now I just add way, I add a lot to everything except cereal. <laughs> and so I got it a little garlicky, but it was okay. I added cheese. That was the, uh, like, what is that? Mexican style cheese, I think is what the package said. Um, but you can add whatever shredded cheese you have. Any cheese will do fine. Now we're gonna use mayonnaise here. Um, you actually could use sour cream or you could use plain Greek yogurt. That's another option as well. I use plain Greek yogurt in a lot of things, but any of those options will work. We just want something smooth, creamy, that's gonna bring all of this together, okay? So now we're mixing it all up and apparently I didn't think there was enough mayonnaise, so I'm adding a little bit more. All right, so get it well combined, and then we want to grab the dill. I did have fresh dill from a different recipe. If you just have the canned stuff, that's fine. If you don't have any, don't not make this recipe just because you don't have dill. Dill is not a deal breaker. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, the deal is not a deal breaker, okay? So just add it if you have it. If you don't, you can skip it. Do I have dad jokes or what? Seriously? That's a dad joke, but okay, we're gonna add that and we're just gonna mix it all up and get everything well combined. Am I funny, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Jack says I'm funny and Jack says, hello, how are you guys? Okay, we're getting everything mixed up. And can I just tell you this song reminds me of Gloria Estefan's Turn the Beat Around, like just a little bit. Does it remind you of that? Seriously. All right, so we are gonna use our baking uh, stones to do this. I'm gonna use a round one for the ring. That's what we're gonna do first is the ring. And you need two cans of crescent rolls per ring or braid. So when I was showing you all of that, I really should have had four cans because I'm making a braid and a ring. So we're gonna start off making the ring and we're just gonna take these pieces and the big end of the triangle side, 
bear with me here. I may not describe this the best, but we're gonna take the longest end of the triangle side and we're gonna put it towards the center. So then the pointed end is out, outwards, <laughs> and it'll be like a sun kind of thing. You're gonna see, like I'm a visual illustration needed person. So here we go. This is how it's gonna look for you to make the ring. And notice I'm overlapping here, okay? So one can is not enough, two cans, you know, it's it's a little much. So that's why we're overlapping a bit, but the overlap is needed because we want this to be, when we, when we stuff it, <laughs> we want it to all be nice and tight in here so that it's not, uh, we want there to be plenty of dough to accommodate the filling, okay? So overlapping is a good thing. So remember, I made enough filling here for a ring and a braid or for two rings, two braids, whatever. Um, but you'll notice we are taking the filling and we are putting it on the dough, leaving enough like it's towards the center. <laughs> Just look at what I'm doing, would you? Um, I am not always the best at describing all of this, but we wanna make sure that it's around the edge of the circle part because we're gonna pull over that pointed part to seal everything up. This is really not complicated, I promise. It really is. There you go, here we go. There, that's how you do it. This is really a simple, simple dish to make and it cooks fast, it comes together fast, but describing the words can be hard. Don't forget, you can get a printable version of this recipe over at crystalandcump.com. I will leave a link below in the description and in the comments. So now we're gonna brush it with egg white. I was gonna show you here how easy it is to just do it with the shell to separate the two. And that was an epic fail, but that's okay. Um, so we just want the egg white here because we're going to brush the top of the dough so that it leaves it with a golden, yummy, flaky layer on top. And the egg white helps with that. So just use a whisk to whisk up that uh, egg white. And then we're going to use a pastry brush. I like the silicone kind because they're easier to clean and they last longer in my humble opinion. And we're just going to dust or brush, brush, brush the top of the crescent rolls with that. And now we're gonna pop it in the oven according to the cooking instructions that you will get by clicking the printable version of the recipe at crystaluncom.com, which is down below in the comments. And now I'm gonna use another pan and spray it as well, and we're going to make the braid. Now, I've had people leave comments like on Facebook when I've shared this or on the blog post, and they're like, this isn't a braid, it's more of a twist. Whatever, call it whatever you want. We don't have to be all technical defining our words here. You're going to make, you're gonna use crescent roll to make a doughy entrapulation with all of the stuffing inside, with all of that filling, the broccoli, cheese, mayonnaise filling inside. You can make it look more braided than I do. It doesn't matter. Honestly, even if it looks like a total mess, and I'm just gonna tell you this one, I, I was very distracted by kids. I, you know, lots going on, but at the end of the day, it looked beautiful when it came out of the oven. So even if it doesn't look perfect when you're popping it in the oven, that is okay, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be beautiful when it comes out and your kids are gonna eat it because they're going to be hungry and they're going to be grateful and they're going to love it. And your house is gonna smell amazing while it's cooking. Trust me here. One thing that you could do here that I did not take the time to do, you could get a pastry roller um, or you could even use a uh, rolling pin and just kind of roll over this to seal everything a little bit better. Honestly, I just wanted to get dinner done and in the oven and we had a lot going on and my little kids wanted to have a movie night and blah, blah, blah. So lots of, and then lots of distractions. So it's okay. It all worked out in the end and this is all gonna cook and just be perfect. Okay, so you do it how you want to do it. Invest the time that you want to invest.
so the idea here is to cut the same number of slits on this side and then cut the same number on the other side so that when you connect the sides together, which I'm going to show you in just a second how to do that, there's equal numbers, right? I really honestly, guys, don't overthink this. Just get the general idea, you know, make your slices. If you end up with a couple of extra, uh, what do we want to call these dough slices on one side, that's okay. If things kind of start to come apart because of the perforations in the dough, just use your fingers like I'm doing right there and push it together. Okay. So see this again, trust me, it's going to be beautiful when it comes out of the oven. Okay, and we're going to use the rest of that egg white and wash the top of, do a egg white wash on top of the um, braid or the twist or the whatever you wanna call it. Um, again, this is gonna give it that golden brown color, make it flaky, crispy, yummy. And then see how I did that? Like just smoosh it all together. So we have one nice consistently sized uh, braid here and we're gonna pop it in the oven all right here is the ring as it's coming out of the oven look at how gorgeous that is it is so beautiful and it was so easy to do it is done we serve it hot we just go ahead and start cutting into it oh my goodness this was the yummiest dinner it was so so awesome we're just gonna cut it into slices put it on plates I serve it with some fruit for some kids some kids don't want anything with it at all you could serve it with a side salad this you could cut up and put out um, on a charcuterie board if you're having some sort of like brunchy um, brunchy lunchy or even a dinner kind of thing um, this is great to take for a holiday gathering a potluck gathering and you know what as we are approaching Thanksgiving or any holiday, if you have leftover turkey, throw that in there instead of the chicken. It will certainly work just as well. Seriously, this is a great way to use up leftover turkey. All right, and I will show you, there's the braid. Look at how beautiful it is, gorgeous. Not one person has ever said to me, that doesn't look braided, I'm not eating it. <laughs> it is so good. If you have never done this, make it today, it is phenomenal. All right, guys, I hope that you have found this helpful. I hope that this is a recipe that you will try. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and for watching this. And we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.